So I've received a number of comments asking me to recreate one of these maps from the Let Me Know YouTube channel. So this channel produces really high-end documentaries with really, really great high-quality motion graphics. And in today's episode, I'm going to be recreating a specific map that I saw on an episode called Consumed by the Apocalypse. And in this particular section, they show you a map of a nuclear holocaust. So it's a simple pan from left to right on the map here with all these explosions going off. As always, to recreate this map, I'm going to be using Adobe After Effects with a premium plugin called GeoLayers 3 with the Map Tiler Premium Data Plan. Now, if you don't have that Map Tiler account, you're not going to have all of the functionality inside of GeoLayers 3 that you're going to see that I have inside of this tutorial. All right, so I'm inside of Adobe After Effects here, and I've actually got my reference clip of the original animation right here. So now I'm going to be able to, you know, take quick color samples, use this as a visual reference, and I can do side-by-side -side comparisons. Now, I'm going to go over to the GeoLayers panel. If you don't see it, just go to Window, Extensions, and you'll find it there after you've done the installation. And I'm going to click on Create Map Comp, and then I'm going to go ahead and give this a name change it to Ultra HD 4K. Now if you've got this map Tyler data plan, you're gonna have a bunch of different options that you can choose from all this um, data that you can use as well as these color schemes. It gives you a bunch of customization options. I think it's currently running at about $25 a month to get this plan, but if you don't have it, you're not gonna see um, a bunch of stuff that I'm seeing here. I'm gonna select Natural Earth. And now I could try to match all the colors right here from this color scheme to match the map here, but I'm going to do a combination. I'm just going to match uh, the colors of the ocean, and then once I've created the map comp, I'm going to use the Lumetri color effect to kind of fine tune it and get the look that I want. Now to try to match some of these colors, I'm going to go to Window and open up the Info panel. This allows me to read some of the color value information as I hover the cursor over my image. So right here, I'm going to go and grab this water color. So you see in the color palette here, I have this tool tips that says water. I have two different water colors. So I'm going to click on this. As I hover my mouse over the ocean here, you can see the RGB values are 17. So I'm going to go type that in here. And unfortunately, there's no color picker, so I have to do it manually. I'm going to do the same thing for deep water. And so now this color is matching this. And I'm going to do uh, all my further modifications once the comp is already set up. So now I'm going to click Create. That's going to set up all my comps and pre-comps and all the elements that I need inside of After Effects here. All right, actually, now I'm going to grab this footage panel and just put it right next to my comp panel. All right, so now I'm going to go to the Effects and Presets panel. And I'm going to grab the Lumetri Color Effect. And now I will apply that straight on my main comp here. I'm going to grab all the other GeoLayers effects and just kind of close those down so this is nice and neat. I can focus on Lumetri Color Panel. Now I'm just going to go into Basic Correction and focus on tone here. Well first I'm just going to bring the saturation down. So bring the saturation all the way down and let's zoom in on a specific part of the map. Now if you look right here this looks pretty low resolution and this is the way GeoLayers works. It downloads low res images and that allows you to work much faster and if you want to um, you know get those high res images once you're done doing your animations you can click on this little finalize button over here. Now this, this will finalize and download all of the images to your sequence and it can, it can take a little while. So if you just want to have you know, a speedier workflow and you just want to look at a high res image, just one, you can hold the control key and click on finalize. And right here, it's telling you one frame of your containing comp is finalizing. And it's essentially you know, downloading that high res map tile imagery. And there we go. Now I can see that's much, much higher resolution now. All right, so now I'm going to play with the tone here. Let's just bring the exposure down. And as I do that, the blacks are, um, you know, maybe getting a little too dark. So I can bring the black level back up a little bit. I'll pump the exposure down even a little more. All right, now if you look at the edge here, you can see that it's got this blur. So it's almost like a blur. It's blurring outward, all the edges here. For that, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. So I'm going to right-click here in the comp. I'll go to New, Adjustment Layer. And then I'm going to go back to Effects and Presets. And I'm going to search under Blur and Sharpen. And I'll grab, uh, let's see here, CC Radial Blur. And I don't want Scratch. I'm going to do Fading Zoom. Okay, now we got this kind of shooting out here. And I think it's a little, little too much. So I'll bring it back down to maybe 10. Now one really cool thing about this map is, look at this, it's got this chromatic aberration, which is like this color fringing on the edge. Very, very cool. Now unfortunately, uh, for purposes of time, I'm not going to be able to dive in and quickly show you how to do that, because that's pretty intensive. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons this guy 
has such amazing does such amazing work um and a lot of people say he's like the king of quality over quantity because he only puts out you know one video every few months and they're always so high quality and it's because of this level of detail and i'm not sure what he did here maybe he I know there's um, a plugin from Red Giant called Chromatic Aberration that you could slap on there and make changes. And you can also do this manually, but it requires like duplicating the comp several times and using the shift channels and then doing some crazy blend mode. So it would really extend the level of, of this tutorial to be much, much longer. But it does give it this really amazing look if you look at the edges. The detail is really, really cool. I can also see a vignette here. You can see it's kind of dark on the outer edges. So for that, I'm going to go to the shape layer, grab the rectangle tool, and let's turn the fill to solid and the stroke to nothing. And we'll make that black. And I'll double click it. That'll make it uh, fit to comp. And then I can go grab, um, let's go grab the ellipse tool. And I'll make sure it's set to mask because I'm going to mask out this rectangle. And then I can create kind of this custom look. Then I'll switch the mask to subtract. And then I'll hit the F key to bring up the mask feather and then just totally crank that out. Maybe something like 500 pixels. And then maybe even bring the opacity of this down to 75, something like that. Okay, I got the blur, I got the vignette, I've got the colors set up um, on the proper black and white. Now I need to match this kind of, um, this little tilt of the bearing and the pitch changes. I'll reposition this. Now I'm going to hold uh, the right mouse key and then as I move it you can see I can control the bearing and the pitch. So I'm just going to try to pitch this set it how it is here cool now one other little detail you'll notice is that all of the borders are white and if you look here all of the borders are black so to change that I'm gonna do something here I'm gonna go to my actual map comp click up here click on the settings and then if I go to edit imagery I can go down here and I can turn off all the different features that I don't want so I don't want any of these administrative um, and I want to actually turn off this is, uh, you know, the terrain of the ocean. I'm going to turn that off so none of that shows up. I'll turn off all this stuff. Roads, urban areas, uh, glacier. And now I'll click Apply. So now I've turned those borders off. I'm just going to finalize this frame to double check and take a closer look here and see that all, actually all the borders are off, which they are. And now I'll go back to the comps, and there's a little Duplicate button here. I'm going to click on Duplicate, and then I'm going to click on Duplicate this comp I'm going to make sure it's linked so that anytime I animate my main comp, this one will follow along. And I'm going to call it White Borders. And one of the reasons I want to separate this is so I can control the opacity of it as well. Now I'm going to dive down into the settings, and I'll go to Advanced. Okay, and then I'll click Edit Imagery. And now I should be able to have control over background oceans. And I still have Admin Sub and Country. And let's go up here to the color palette. And let's find borders. Okay, there's borders. Yeah, let's grab borders. Set that to white. Okay, so again, the reason I made this on a separate comp is so that now I can simply, you know, bring the opacity of this down. So I'm going to bring it down to 50%. That's looking good. Okay, now I'm going to focus on these little explosions here. So you can see these are explosions are made up of these little circles. In fact, there are two circles, one inner circle, one outer circle and uh, they're just stroke elements that are growing in size and then fade out. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new comp. I'm gonna call it Explosion. I'm gonna go grab the Shape tool and I'm gonna turn off the fill and turn on the stroke. And I'm gonna set this color to match this orange over here. All right, so first let's focus on the inner circle. I'm gonna click and drag here to create this one. And you know what, I'm just gonna, I wanna see this up close and personal. So I'll create these as two separate layers. So first, I'm gonna call this one inner circle. And I'm gonna go grab the ellipse. And to make sure it's center, I'm gonna open up transformation properties and just center this out by zeroing the position. And I'm gonna go to the ellipse path, open this up, and I'm gonna change the size to 150. Actually, this is our inner circle, so let's make it 50. I'm going to go to stroke. Let's put the stroke to like 25. Now this is going to be like a two second animation. So I'm going to go over to the two second mark, hit in, and then just trim this comp to match this. So now to animate this, I'm just going to grab the size and this will go from 0 to 50. 
I'm going to grab both these keyframes, and now I'm going to go open up this tool I have called Motion. Really, really powerful plugin. And I'm just going to give it um, this quick 100 to 5 like velocity movement here. And I'm going to go back and look at our reference here and see what this does. I'm going to go frame by frame. So it also looks like the stroke width is changing. So I'm going to go to stroke width and we'll go from 25 and then we'll go down to like maybe 10. Let's take a look at 10. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so that's my inner circle. Now I can simply duplicate this and then create my outer circle. I'm gonna go here. Now I want my outer circle to fade out before. Um, so I'll have these end at like the one second mark. But this one's gonna go bigger. So I'm gonna to go to the end keyframe and we're gonna make this one 150 pixels. And I'm gonna change the stroke width down to five. And actually, you know what? I'm going to use a texture to fade these out. So these can I can keep the keyframes at the same location. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. But if you go look at our, um, you really zoom in, you can see that the way these fade out is just so cool. So like, it's not just this simple dissolve or stroke width going to zero. It's actually like decaying. If you look here, it's not a straight solid line. Very, very cool. So I'm going to go back to my explosion. So to do that, I'm going to go and grab a new solid. And I'll call it decay, make it the comp size, doesn't matter about the color. Now I'm going to go to effects and presets, and I'm going to type in fractal noise. Here's fractal noise. I'm going to drop this on the decay, and I'm going to use the parameters of this fractal noise to dissolve out my circles. Well, since these are simple black and white values, I can use the luminance values as track mat. So I'm going to go down here to track mat. I'm going to grab the outer circle, and I'm going to select luma mat. And now you can see that this actually has the fractal here. And if I go back to the fractal and I start to make some adjustments, you can see that now that's going to fade away. So I'm going to switch this to strings. And you can see this will just make it a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to set the brightness to 100. And this will kind of be our start point. So let's say I want it to start decaying right here. I'm going to click the keyframe of my brightness. And then I'm going to go a little bit and then I'll take this down to negative 100 and that should go all the way out. So you can see right there that's much more dynamic than just doing a simple opacity keyframe. And now I can simply duplicate this decay and bring it over top of my inner circle and then maybe change the evolution a little bit of this one. And then I'm gonna grab LumaMat of my inner and now they should both fade out. But I want my inner circle to fade out you know, a little bit later. So I'm going to grab the keyframes of this one and we'll have this one fade out a little bit later. One other thing I want to do just to make it look a little bit more dynamic is just to put a little blur on it so it doesn't have such uh, harsh edges. So I'm going to grab the Gaussian blur and I'm going to put it on uh, the outer circle and pump that up to maybe three just to soften it up a bit. Let's do four and then I'll copy that and paste it here. And there we go. Now we have our little blast here. So I can take this and use it as a default label template. So how do I do that? Well, I open up my Geo Layers 3 items here, and right here you have a folder called Label Templates. Well, Label Templates are all over here. So if I click on this drop-down menu, these are all the label templates that I have available to me. I have um, the different placements here. I can download other templates that are available. So if I click on Download Templates, um, the creator, Marcus, has all of these ones that are already created. I can download specific looks or I can just use specific uh, comps here. But all I need to do is drag this and place it in the label templates folder, and now that will populate inside of my label templates right here. Now you can see I have explosion right here. Now I can type in District of Columbia. If there's one place that's gonna get nuked, you better believe it's DC. Um, now you see I have these little buttons here, fit to view, add label, draw, Add to browser. So all I need to do is grab that label template explosion and then go down here, add label. Okay, that's cool. Well, it's in the right location, but it's not matching the bearing and the pitch of my map. And that's simple enough to fix. I'll click on the actual label and I'll go to effect controls. And you can see right here it added a couple of these rotate with map. I'm going to click on rotate with map and then I'm going to toggle this and go turn on 3D and then it will slap and uh, stay right there. And it's also not blending very well because I have it above my adjustment layer. So let me bring it down below my adjustment layer and now it's matching up with that blur. 
Okay, now that's in place. Let's say I want to mix it up a little bit and I don't want each explosion to look the same. So I don't want them all to decay the same because it might look a little too uniform. Well, to fix that, I can go to the project panel and I can open up those label templates and I can simply duplicate this explosion. Now I have explosion two. I'll open this up and let's go to the decay layer, effect controls, and just change up the evolution again. Go to the other decay, change up the evolution, and now those should be a little bit different. So now let's go and search for Paris. And I'm gonna go grab Explosion 2, and I will label Paris. Turn on Rotate with Map, and then turn on 3D. Now I'm not sure how precise he was with these, but he put so many out here. So I could, you know, this is gonna take a long time if I'm just typing in cities here. So one other option I could do is I could create another explosion comp and just put, you know, like duplicate these and put them out like kind of all over. Or I can just manually click this, said add template label, and then it brings up the little crosshairs and I can put the crosshairs wherever I want. So let's say we want this one to go on London. And then I can click on add label. It's gonna add the label there. And then I'll rotate with map, click 3D. So as you can see, this will take a little bit of time to actually add these. So once again, for the purposes of brevity, I won't show me adding all of these. I'm just gonna go do it. It's gonna take me a little while. Okay, so that took a long time to create. And once again, this I think that's a great testament to why the quality of this particular channel is so good. This guy puts so much work into each of these videos. Really, really high quality. So I labeled little explosions on about 70 different cities here. Every time you create a label, you have to turn on 3D for it and go into effect controls and turn on rotate with map. So one way I avoided this was to simply duplicate um, you know, like control D and then you can use the pixel offset to reposition and it won't be perfectly geographically placed. However, it's much, much faster. Now for the last step here, I just need to recreate this camera move, which is really just a simple change in latitude as well as the bearing and pitch. So I'm going to bring my playhead to the beginning and I'm going to hit this little keyframe button here and that will add all these keyframes to my map comp. Expand this. Now the starting position is good. I'm just going to adjust the bearing and the pitch. So for the bearing, I'm going to set this to 25. And then for the pitch, I'll bring that down to 50. And now let me bring my playhead to the end and we'll bring the bearing down to zero. And then I will change not the latitude, but the longitude. We're trying to fake like a panning shot here. You know what, I'm going to bring this longitude a little bit further out like that. All right, so now I'm gonna finalize this entire thing and export it out and let's take a look at it. Okay, so there you have it. There's the final animation I was able to create. This took a long time. Uh, the detail and the quality here is very high. I still didn't get that chromatic aberration, but you know what, after I recorded this tutorial, I do remember there is a plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration. I'm gonna link down to that in the video description if you wanna download that and play around with it. I'm also gonna be making these little explosion animations available for free download. I'll uh, put another link down in the video description and that will be an After Effects project file. So be sure to go pick that up. And as always, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. For more map videos, go check out my Monday Maps playlist and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell.